rolling in like a wet season storm. That's how Lapalong Damarangi remembers the intervention 15 years ago. To us, it was like there wasn't any blue skies around us. It was covered with thick grey clouds. You know, when the first intervention came, it was like that. These Territorians also lived through the policy, formerly called the Emergency Response, a federal reaction to a report about child sexual abuse in remote communities. That just broad brushed the whole of the Aboriginal community. So, you know, we've, um, a lot of us have been, you know, a lot of people have been living in shame. I just think that they, um, they just smashed the Aboriginal community. They'd all been labelled as um, child sex offenders. Good people, you know, honourable people, and there was this blanket labelling of Aboriginal men. Accompanied by the military, Commonwealth public servants flew into communities, putting up signs about alcohol and pornography bans and carrying out compulsory health checks on children. The fear inside us all, I mean, we are parents just like you people, you know? Um, and the fear inside that is that it was like... Are they, uh, is this for real? It is like, here yeah, they come back again to take our children. That was the fear. There were more police and the demolition of a jobs program that was, according to many, having success. And to do all this, racial discrimination laws were suspended. It's another way of, let's, we'll get another term of politics if we bring the black football out of the cupboard and start booting it around the you know, political football field again. The authors of the report used to justify the intervention had made it clear. Remote residents should be empowered, given support to find their own answers to health, housing and social issues in their communities. But that's not how Leanne Caton remembers things playing out. For them to say to me as a public servant, um, you'll be taking out all these non-Aboriginal bureaucrats from Canberra to orientate them to the bush. Oh, no, I'm not. I just said, I'm not having any part of this, particularly as a Commonwealth Government employee. You know, so I resigned on the spot. Then I thought about how I was going to pay two mortgages after that. Didn't matter. Miriam Rose, a former school principal and teacher from the community of Nauyu, initially supported the intervention, joining the federal government's task force. We were all excited with thinking that, wow, it's going to be really good for the communities throughout the Territory in um, that a lot of the things that we're having issues with, they're going to listen to us and fix. But she found it was at best a talk fest and later a heartbreaking failure to listen to people on the ground. You just don't listen on the outside, you listen on the inside as well. From her perspective, constant changes to the remote jobs program caused the most damage, coupled with a territory government decision to merge local councils. They just took everything from us. They sacked everybody. They gave our jobs to people from outside. She and others, like the Territory's Australian of the Year, now want the message about listening to finally break through. We're 31% of the population in the NT, but sometimes we feel like we're invisible. Back in Nauyu, local resident John Daly, who was the Northern Land Council's chairman when the intervention rolled in, wants more investment in local leaders. The government nipped that in the bud when they brought the intervention in, and now we have situations out in our neighbouring town of Wadi where, you know, we have a massive problem out there at the moment. Nobody knows how to fix it. Well, you can't fix it. Government can't fix problems like that. Communities need to fix it. His message is for all levels of government. Create something for the future generation because if you have a look at conflicts around the world, you continue to just push things in a corner and hope they disappear and go away. Bad things come from models like that. Make it worthwhile that you know, an Aboriginal kid can strive to be a Prime Minister or strive to be something. It's all right to make mistakes, but you need to move forward and make sure that mistake is never made again. Felicity James, ABC News.